in my search in myself, I found nothing. I'm now in a dream, in and from which it's impossible to move. All my gestures are being held back, motionless. And here at times I begin to scream like a wounded animal. I'm in this dream as long as I don't either die or suicide. It's necessary to cut life into bits. For the butcher store, the bed of a woman who's giving birth is not as bloody as this. Absurdity. Blessed insolence which saves and connivance are found in these cuts, these cuts into veracity. Or the cries of children who aren't playing, the cries of humans and of the earth itself turning, the vertigo, all these are found in the cuts. Not just decadence and rot, but the entire human being is found there. No one can be more human than this. To welcome in all this hatred. No one can be more human than this. I'm breaking. In the very place where my calm arrogance used to be, I find only here and now the misery and the hurt of bestial howling. Kathy. Face to face with death. I saw myself, sitting on one of the benches, crying. It was the school to which my parents had sent me. I saw another girl run by with a large rubber ball. But I had to go to the bathroom again place where we, the girls, were allowed to be free. I had wandered away from the others, the laboratory. The sound of Baudelaire was still in my ears. I entered. An odor halfway between the smell of a candy factory and that of school disinfectant, was hanging inside one of the cubicles. A vapor rose up from its seat, vapor of tenderness given off by a hair. The room which I was in was so tiny that I couldn't stand back up. I looked up. Above me, the roll of white toilet paper was covered with specks of black hairs. It was the reflection of my face before the creation of the world. 